Well, it's no secret that I prefer cars from the 80s and 90s. And I've also compared the business I'm in to kind of like an alcoholic running a liquor store, which is why I couldn't say no to this 27,000 mile Toyota 4Runner. And this thing was practically thrown away. This was an abandoned car that was towed to a tow lot, which I buy cars from. I mean, I get cars from all over the place and most of the time they're wrecked or beyond repair but sometimes they're not. And I, I have a soft spot for cars from this era and this is just, it's too nice to throw away. Now, before you go, oh, well, you have so many projects. Well, how, do you, how do you keep adding? Well, it's a disease. I mean, maybe not in the clinical definition, but in my head, I can't say no. But thankfully, I've pawned this car off to my buddy Pete on the East Coast and he'll fix it the way I'll fix it. He has a lot more cars than I do. I don't know how he does it, but I'm sure people say that about me. But at the end of the day, this thing needed to be saved. I don't care how it got saved, it just, it had to be saved. So, I'm gonna kinda show you what people throw away, I, may, perhaps why they've thrown it away, and also why I absolutely despise the 3VZ engine. Now this isn't my first 4Runner. Actually, before I had my 80 series Land Cruiser, I had a 91 4Runner that I rescued from a salvage yard. Uh, it was a five-speed SR5, and we ended up doing a 5VZ swap because the three liter blue head gaskets. I know you're all surprised. Now, when I saw this one, I thought, man, it is solid. And it, it really is. It's not perfect. It, it looks way better in pictures and in this video, it's probably gonna look like a million bucks, but it's really not. Uh, it really needs a lot of help, but with 27,000 miles, I feel like it's worth it. It doesn't have any rust on the rear quarters. It's all solid. It has a little bit down here where the rocker meets the dog leg. And it just has normal faults from trucks from this era, like the dash is cracked, the fuel door's broken. I think every Toyota ever made in the mid 90s had a broken fuel door. But this is all like little stuff. This is all stuff that can be sorted quite easily. There are a lot of reasons as to why this generation of 4Runner are not quite as popular with enthusiasts as its predecessor or its successor. And most of those reasons have to do with the three liter that's underneath the hood. N nobody likes it, like nobody likes it. But that aside, I'm not gonna tell you that the rest of the truck is perfect either. I really don't like the way the back glass and tailgate are engineered. In order to put the tailgate down, you have to lower the glass, which is great when everything works, but it doesn't always work. The, the regulators fail and then you can't put the glass down or it doesn't go back up. And then if you got your arms full of groceries, you got a bunch of stuff in your hands, you go to put your key inside this tumbler and it's all frozen and full of junk and you break the key off in it. That's how you lower the glass. The only other way you can do it is to put the key in the ignition and hit the switch to lower the glass. I, it's a great idea when everything works but it doesn't always work. And they also have issues like, well, they have rear spring fatigue issues and the dash is cracked. Well, that's no different than anything else from this era. I mean, I'm not complaining about these trucks whatsoever. I'm just saying none of those things matter because this truck is just too nice to throw away. It's just too nice. Some of them need to be saved. I think the saddest part of this truck is not so much the fact that it was cast away with only 27,000 miles on it. It's the fact that I think Ray Charles is the one that prepped this before it got painted. I mean, the sand marks in this are awful. I haven't seen something like this in a long time. I really hope they didn't pay US dollars for this paint job. This is pretty terrible, but it looks good from afar and it looks far from good when you're up close. Another not so hot thing, whoever owned this had some sort of, I think this is one of those buy here, pay here, let me disable your truck until you make a payment type of things or maybe it's an alarm either way i had to kind of cobble the wiring back together on the ignition switch this is pretty common when they go to install one of those uh ignition defeating devices if you don't make your payments all they do is interrupt the ground uh from the uh ignition switch so that nothing powers up in the truck but this looks terrible also i had to take all of this apart because I don't have a key for it. I don't always get a key when I get something from a tow lot and this one is no different. Sometimes I've gotten lucky and found keys or maybe there'll be a hide of keys on the frame from like 15 years ago that's all rusty and nasty and at least I can go get it copied. But I have no key for this. I looked everywhere. And so I had to remove the anti-theft, uh, the, the brake head bolts that hold the 
ignition to the steering so I can unlock the steering. And then I used a, this isn't the new key, if I had a screwdriver, to turn the ignition. And that's how I found out the next thing. Well, it does run, but in typical three liter fashion, it sounds awful. It has a very unhappy connecting rod. But it has oil pressure, if that's some sort of consolation. The 3VZ-E engine is definitely a black eye for Toyota from this era. It's the reason that most of these trucks don't exist anymore, and that makes me resent it. But someone put some effort into this one. It has a new fuel pressure regulator, it has a new distributor, a new throttle body boot, radiator, and the hoses have been done. So someone cared about this, or at least tried to care about this, but it was all in vain. I mean, it has horrific rod knock. I'm sure you could probably rebuild it, and the crank might be able to be turned. But why would you go through all that effort for an engine that's notoriously bad and only gets 13 to 15 miles to the gallon on a great day and only makes 150 horsepower. It would be one thing if one of those things wasn't true, but they're all true. There's no really good points to this engine, which is why the 3.4 is such a popular swap. That's what I had done to mine, and that's what will be done to this. The bottom of this truck is actually pretty decent too. This generation does not suffer from frame rot, at least I haven't seen any, not like the uh, next generation, which they had a campaign to replace those. But it just has some minor scale on everything. It's just typical for a 20 something thousand mile truck in the Midwest. It still looks really good. I mean, it still has the factory converter and the exhaust. Well, the exhaust has been replaced. Okay, so not that good, but it still looks good. You'll have to pardon the mess of parts I had to take off, but the interior is nice. The headliner's nice. The carpet's nice. The seats are pretty decent. It's just the dash. It's like the worst part. It's, it's just, why would you throw this away? Why wouldn't you come back for this? And there is a piece of the rear hatch that covers the window regulator for the back window. So I think we know that somebody was in there trying to fix it. Someone has even put brand new tires on his 4Runner. It just, it had to be saved. So I, I'm going to explain the process in which these cars end up at salvage yards. I'm sure a lot of you have been walking through a yard and you see a car there and you think, this is nicer than mine. Like, why is this even here? Well, there's a couple reasons why a car could be at a salvage yard. And if you pay attention on the windshield, you'll see stickers if it's from an auction. If it's a long rectangle one, it's from Copart. And IA has a big rectangle. It's usually on the right side of the windshield. And, uh, you know, these salvage yards and, and, and places buy these cars from the auction. Sometimes they get fixed and flipped. Sometimes they just go straight to a, a salvage yard, a self-service yard or a full-service yard. That's, most of mine come from the auction. But some cars that are in the salvage yard are either someone has called in and said, hey, I have this car sitting on my, par on my driveway or my parking lot. Here's the title. Come get it. Uh, or the car gets towed to a tow lot. And after 60 or 90 days or however long that area needs to, to clear a VIN, uh, that car gets hauled off to a salvage yard. And that's where this one ended up. This car was illegally parked somewhere or abandoned somewhere. And then this, uh, the tow lot sent set certified letters and nobody responded, or maybe they forfeited the title. I'm not quite sure. Either way, this does have a title. I do own the title to it, so I can control what happens to it. Some of those other yards, they really just don't care. It's just another car for them. It doesn't matter how nice it is or how few miles are on it. And it's kind of sad, but from a business perspective, I totally understand. But And, and I know I have a, a business to run and I have to make money, but I don't always have to make a bunch of money. Sometimes I feel good just making sure something like this doesn't end up in the scrap heap. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this rad rescue. I'm sure there will be more because it's just, I can't stop myself. And I'll see you guys on the next one.